hope you're all well. Thank you for joining myself and Tom in the studio today. I hope you're having a lovely afternoon, whatever the weather may be like or whatever you are doing. I hope some of you are crafting. I can see a lot of you are cooking. So um, cinnamon rolls, I think I did see there. Looked very nice, whatever it was going on, but it was amazing. So welcome everybody. As you can see, we have my son in the studio today and he wanted to come into studio today because he has a little message however I'm just going to go through the admin side of things with you first so my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft and I love anything to do with crafting so you might have caught us before on YouTube we have 328 or 330 videos on there now where you can go and grab some inspiration you do not have to have the products we use in our shows the channel is about inspiring one another so feel free to go and take as much from it as you wish if you are watching on YouTube don't forget to click the subscribe button and if you are watching on Facebook don't forget to pop a comment at the end of the show on the picture that I post and you could be in with a chance to win one of the lovely makes so it's quite a nice day it's not raining here I don't know what they're welcome to all the lovely people that tune in every single day thank you so much so Chris, Di, Amanda, Sue and Dave hi hi guys Heather, Pat Pepper hi sweetheart so a lot of you I won't say a lot of you I've met I have met a handful of you but you know you are part of the um, S BM family it's the right place to be for encouragement inspiration and we do look after each other on this channel which is also amazing so just a couple of admin things I just need to go through so I am back on create and craft on Friday at 9 45 with another sale show and a lot of you have been asking about the dresses those dresses are in the show on Friday along with a few other products as well which again will be at great prices so wait till the live hour till it drops a lot of people have been asking about the purple pass and things like that unbeknown to me we were unaware of the purple pass it's something create and craft are doing to encourage people to become members and they put it all in my show so if you are not a member you could still get the discounted price i don't know how long it's going to last for i'm not sure exactly um, the purpose of it but all i will say to you is if you're not a member you will still get the prices that club members get but i think it is only for a short period of time so watch out for that one um, in today's studio we are going to be using the lovely tree uh, trees swing stamp today um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's very clear but we are going to be using the lovely swing stamp today so if you have been watching the show you will know that i have been using this one for the last three live studios this stamp is still available and you can still follow the tuition and follow along over on youtube it never disappears so if you're if say if you're just joining the channel today for the first time welcome firstly and secondly if you are interested in any of the products new or old you can go to www.stampsbyme.co.uk and pop fbl into the search engine and it shows you all the products we've used recently however if you have time on your hands which some of you may have you can take a lovely cruise around the um, stamps by me website there's lots on there we have a gallery which shows you all of the samples that have been made over the last however many years so go and have a look at that and we also have um, all of the lovely downloadable parts on there as well which we will be uploading as soon as staff are allowed back in the building so we do still have the paint stack that's on TV it's unfortunate though that the price is not the same as TV we we do not have a say in how TV sell our products and they can obviously afford to reduce the prices sometimes astronomically uh, but yes we do still have a few and they are on our website under the paint section so Tom is in studio today and it's very very Tom is a very lucky boy in the sense that he does get lots of presents and cards and gifts from you lovely ladies at home uh, I'm not going to name any of those ladies uh, you know who you are and we do appreciate everything that you do but Tom has received a lovely box of goodies today haven't you do you want to show everybody what you've received today so oh, as you all know really showed them. no they didn't see it as you all know Tom loves gems so 
we have received a lovely box of goodies today with full of gems. Do you want to show some of the beautiful gems? It has named them all. There is a pink one wasn't even stuck on my palette. But so what other ones are on there, darling? And there are some on this side. But, and there's some up. There's um, these silver disco ones. You need there's to show them at the camera, darling. There's so people big can see. circles and little circles and then medium circles. And then there's some flower ones that are colourful. Then there's this one that I've got in my shirt. Oh yeah, pop And shirt, there's yeah. some red ones here. What like like a jellies and then there's some of these, these two ones. So, okay, well done. So it has some belters in there. And so there thank you to the lovely hearts. lady that sent those and the beautiful card that you made. We are very appreciative. Tom has not put the box down all day. We are all gemmed up. We have gems on our coat. We have gems on our jumpers. The box has even been um, gemmed up and I have my eye on a few of them. And Tom has told me that we can share them, which is fabulous, haven't you, Tom? Mm -hmm might keep him out of my gym so thank you very much so um let's crack on to what we're going to do today he is a happy boy he has done all his schooling oh maybe he needs to do his maths we have to wait for mummy for maths he's done his english with his dad today so welcome everybody hi karen hi tracy sweetheart elizabeth joan doreen if we have any new faces anybody tuning in for the first time this week please let us know where you are tuning in from it would be lovely to see where you are um, in this lovely world. You never know, you might have a crafter around the corner, on the same chat, on the same street, or in the same village, you never know. And this is how we make our friends, crafty friends. So what I'm gonna do is show you, as you can see from the samples here, we've got a whole host of different variations of samples. But what I try to do is, I try not to um, sit here and show you all the posh, fancy things that you can get and buy and cost money what i've tried to do is everything that i've tried to show you over the course of i think we've done this is our third week isn't it over the three weeks is use things that you will have in your stash so if i'm using something that i think you may not have i do try and give you alternatives what you might have in your stash even an alternative stamp if you don't want to have the stamp and what will happen is the lovely ladies on here they come up with great ideas too so just keep your eye on the news feed if you can and it will um, help you should you not have the products that i'm using physically here today so we're going to use a lovely um swing stamp and this has to be a favorite of mine and a few other people's favorites and what we're going to do is we're going to um, chop up the design a little bit today and maybe use it in a different way to what you would traditionally use it as which would be are they, oh, they match your jumper. Well, I didn't see these ones last time. They are beautiful, aren't they? It won't take him long to get through that box, I'm absolutely certain of it. Royal Mail, love it when Tom sends loads of gems on his artwork. So, let's, is anybody crafting along? Don't forget to drink. Thank you, Christine. Is anybody crafting along? Oh, there's a few people cry. oh they're beautiful the oh mummy might have to have some of those they are really nice so what we're going to do is we're going to use the lovely swing and we're going to use it in a um, landscape style today because i'll just show you in the actual fresh packaging because mine is a well-loved one so if you are crafting along this is the one that we're using today like i've said though if you do want to get next week's which i'll show you in a second you can get that one too that is also available and then I'll show you the stamp in its true form and you can see how big it is and in today's studio we are going to use it in landscape form and then over the course of the next three days because we try and do three studios on each stamp which is three live hours so normally we will get maybe six cards seven cards hopefully if we can and then you could take those seven cards of inspiration away with you and twist it change it do the same and whatever happens don't forget to share your makes on our Eureka fan page because I've been looking at all your makes um, that you've all been posting and I'm blown away. They are really, really good guys and I know a lot of you are stepping out of your comfort zone as I am too. So it's really, really good and it's encouragement for me, for others to, you know, give it a go because I get lots of messages from people saying they follow other brands and have done for years and for the first time they're stepping outside of their comfort zone and thoroughly enjoying it. So a challenge is good bright yellow ones 
So I'll just quickly show you the stamp that we launched on Sunday. We launch a brand new stamp every single Monday and it's a 12 week program and this is stamp number four. So as you can see there, it's a great stamp. It's huge. It's got large open spaces in there. And if you, from the back here, you can see we've got some beautiful samples, excuse me, using some of the um, stamps and variation of sentiments. And what will happen is as the weeks move on, we move them down. And as you can see over my shoulder here, this is where I've just popped the lovely tree one. I had so much fun using a tree one. I know a lot of you have enjoyed that one. It's been a fabulous one as that one. It's unfortunate though that the stairs has gone. And every stamp that we sell, a pound goes to our local food bank. And at the end of the 12 weeks, we will let you know how much uh, money we've raised. And then hopefully we'll be able to get a certificate or something um, to be super proud of, you know, just giving a little bit back. So let's grab our beautiful swing. So first of all, for the people that are crafting along, I have a piece of white cardstock. Let's just tidy my station a little bit here. Yeah, beautiful. So I have a piece of white cardstock, and if you are crafting along, it measures 21 tall. I'm sorry, it's in centimetres. That's all that is on my mat. And I promise I will dig the ruler out by 15. So 21 by 15. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. I'm not going to mat and layer my card, so you can make it a little bit smaller if you want, a little bit bigger, and it will probably change as soon as you come to mat and layer it onto a card anyway. But if you do want to copy me exact, um, then that's the card. So let's just see if there's any questions on there. What will we do after the 12 weeks? Have a rest. No, I'm not joking. Uh, we'll think of something. Um, I don't know what exactly, but maybe we'll just continue with studio and, you know, utilise what you've been buying from me for however many years. Just keep going, hey? We'll just keep going. So we'll see what happens. So this uh, piece of cardstock, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit of an aperture today. Let's just um, get rid of that piece. So sorry guys at home, if you are crafting along, I had the wrong piece of card there. So it's 20 by 14, so it's a centimetre less. 20 tall and 14 wide. And I have some tape now. I have some, this is just uh, low tack tape. You can have your masking tape, whatever you've got in your stash. And I'm just going to mask off a centre piece in this centre of this piece of card stock here. So I'm just going to grab some tape. Now, if you have masking tape, be sure to get rid of the tack on your trousers or your clothes. If you have a mat and you're placing it down like so and you do like things symmetrical, go by the lines on your mat. Um, I don't go by lines and I don't measure. I go by eye. That's the way I work. But if you are a different crafter to me, which I probably think most of you will be, um, go with what you do at home. So I'm just going to mask off a rectangle in the centre of this piece of cardstock here. So, um, Tracy, we are thinking about you, sweetheart. I hope you're well. And it's lovely to see you on the live chat today, as always. I hate measuring, so do I, Tina. We can be in the hate measuring club. That's the only club we'd be in the hate though, because it's not very often I hate things. I'm quite positive about everything if we can be. So what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to use this piece here and just going to do a little rectangle in the centre as straight as I possibly can. Oops. Use a different colour, sweetheart. Make sure you drink your tea or coffee. I will have a drink right now. So um, just go in with my eye on this one. I'm not being over precious. Like so, so it's difficult to see on camera there, but there is a rectangle in the centre. Now, if you're not the best blender in the world and you do go outside the lines, I would probably suggest putting the tape on the outside too. I know it takes a little bit more time, um, but then it'll stop any ink going outside that lovely rectangle you've created. So just mask it all off with whatever tape you are doing. Hello, Ben. So the little boy is my son. 
Tom and he does every now and then a little bit more often than not these days um, appear in studio he loves to craft along and see the lovely ladies so then you must be tuning in for the first time so welcome to the channel it's lovely to see you and yep your blending brushes is, will be sent soon it's all exciting isn't it it's all coming together so a drink of my coffee so what we're going to do is today we're going to show you how or the way that I do it and you can change it and adapt it to however you craft at home but I'm going to use two of my uh, generation ink pads here I'm going to use a fuchsia and the deep purple so use what you've got in your stash if you don't have these you may have the Tim Holtz they will work equally as fine and I'm going to use those on my second demo um, but use what you've got in your stash um, and then we are going to use the blending brushes but if you have the daubers with the sponge end they will work as well if that's what you've got at home so what we're going to do, although we've done like a rectangle in here, we're not going to cover the whole area. What we're going to do is we're going to create like an atmospheric, that's a posh word, isn't it? Rectangle. We're not going to fill it. Traditionally, you will see the gradation sometimes from dark purple into pink and you'll get a dark into a like an ombre effect. And they're the most common ones. But what I like to do is I like to just create a hue around one side and it just makes your cards a little bit different. So first of all, let's go with the purple. So I'm just going to use my handle brush here. And it's good to always have a piece of scrap card at the side to just get rid of any excess, excess any lumps, any bumps, any hair that you don't like. Give it a rub onto your um, scrap card. The reason as well why I do this is I've just re-inked my ink pads because they were starting to dry out a little bit. So I didn't want the nasty blob going onto my artwork. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top left here. You can use the cloud inks. Yep, yeah, I've heard a lot of um, good reports about the cloud inks, so I can't see why they wouldn't work. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, go for it and see. Let us know how you get on. And these brushes, you can wash these brushes, but they are self-cleaning brushes, so you don't need to wash them. Just take them to a piece of card and rub them off. Um, if you do wet them and clean them that's fine leave them to air dry and they'll be absolutely fine but you really don't need to waste the time cleaning them just take the excess off and then you're good to go on your next colour so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this purple soft on this corner if you are crafting along I'm going across the top left corner and across the bottom left corner I'm not taking the ink right to that side so I'm going to dab into my ink and then I'm going to take off the excess because I've just re-inked it and then I'm going to take that lovely colour onto there and I'm going to create like a halo or a hue. I'm not doing an ombre effect, I'm not trying to get it like really, really dark, I just want it to be a suggestion. And albeit it doesn't look like there's any ink on my brush at all, I can still see there's colour laying down onto that aperture there what we've created with our tape can you see that there so this is the purple just get a bit more color in there so as you can see i haven't gone right across i haven't taken it to this side here i'm just concentrating on the upper left and right down to the lower left here And then what we're going to do is swap out the colour. So I've just cleaned my brush off, get rid of the purple on there. And then we'll pick up some of this lovely pink, which is bright again, because I've just rehydrated it. And then we're just going to add some pink. Can you see here? Can you see the lovely pink there? Thank you. Drinking, drinking. And then we'll get some lovely pink, but I'm not going to take the pink as far as I did with the purple. So let me know what colours are you using at home. I'm using this lovely pink and purple because this is all I've got out at the moment. 
but let me know what you're using at home. So we've got like a halo going on. Can we see that there? So this side is still like white. And then what I'm going to do is I'd like that purple just to be a, a little bit darker. So let's just clean our brush and go back into the purple. And then just add a bit more purple on there. Just want it to be a little bit darker. But as you can see, I'm not taking that ink right to the right hand side. I'm leaving it sort of open. See there, so we're getting like a hue. Does that make any sense at all? Picked raspberry and a stick on cod. Great, great choice is that one. <laughs> oh, Jeanette stuffing hedgehogs and owls. That sounds, that sounds good. So then, when you come to take your artwork, sorry, your tape away, make sure obviously you do it carefully and not to tear your artwork. Well, that's good, Tom. And then when you remove your tape, and this is a real, real basic technique, guys, but it's really, really effective. there you can see you've got like a halo effect rather than your traditional ombre or your bright into your darks into your lights try and leave some of the area so you've got a hue in there and I like to call it the halo if whether that's right or not I've no idea but hey it's okay so I'm just cleaning my brush here and then it's ready to go for the next one thank you so I have just a um, question then so uh, Doreen Miles if you have ordered the wrong brushes sweetheart just email us at info at stamps by me .co .uk and we'll get them swapped for the ones that you were actually wanting I think a few people have um, changed their mind on what handle is going to work for them and that's absolutely fine just send us an email sweetheart and we'll get them swapped out for you it's not a problem at all so let's just Put this piece of artwork into our Eureka. Now you can use a stamping block or another stamping aid, whatever you've got in your stash there. And we will grab our stamp. So this is where you can sort of play around, you can, you can turn it from landscape to portrait and this stamp lends itself really well to being portrait because it's obviously, sorry, landscape because of how it's, how it's set out but you can stamp it any way you want, you can do it top to bottom and trim down your artwork and that is exactly what I'm going to do, however, I just want to show you a look, I'm not going to put it on because it might have a little bit of ink on there but if you did stamp this over this left hand corner look it would look really pretty but I'm going to go with the portrait and trim it down so I'm going to pop that into my artwork there hold it in place and I'm just going to grab this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hug that window so my um, swing is in the coloured part that we did and then the outside sort of like cuddles it so we've got like a little bit of detail in the stamp there so I've got a question from Halls. How long are orders taken to deliver? So the brushes, uh, we're waiting for those to land, but I have promised that they'll be out by the 15th. Uh, but everything else, about five days with Royal Mail, we're saying. Five days. Some people are getting two in two days. Some are getting it within three. Some One lady on here has been waiting two weeks. Um, but average, we're saying five days. Um, some of the days now, we're not allowed to take our franked mail. So we're limited on days, we have like slots and things, so um, I'm just grateful that they are still operating to be honest, but yeah about five days sweeter. So I'm going to ink this one up in, in a black ink pad.
get lots of black ink on there. My ink pads are quite dry at the moment, but I have some more on the way. So I'm just going to stamp this one down. You're welcome, Holes. So let's hope it's stamped. Ooh, look how pretty. So let's just go back in with my awful ink pad. I do have new ones on their way. Get rid of that fluff from there. So we're starting very basic today. Um, I know a lot of you do not use blending brushes and a lot of you have not done the splats and things like that. So I don't know, but I think you're already doing it now without even realising it, which is great. Let's hope this is stamped a little bit better. So there you can see how lovely um, it looks already from popping that aperture in there. Now, there are a few ways, there's a few things that you could do right now. You could absolutely just trim this down if you wanted to, top and bottom, pop a sentiment in there, pop it on a card. It's literally good to go. But you can elevate it a little bit more if you want to. The sentiment that is in the set is huge, and I'll just show you that now. So you have stay positive. Can we see that there? It's a beautiful font. And it's a beautiful size and you're thinking, well, that's just ridiculous. That, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even go with the stamp. The reason why sometimes I design the stamp sentiments to be bigger is because the sentiment can be the focal point and whatever is in the background gets pushed back. So now if you heat embossed, stay positive in here, that panel, that swing and that tree will get pushed back and then the focal point is the actual sentiment. Does that make any sense at all? I hope so. So... But I also try and incorporate the small ones. So if people do not want to use the large sentiments, they always have the um, capability to pop a small one on there too. I just drink my coffee. So I've got a question, Carrie, can you do a show to demo the swing on a DL? Do you mean this one, sweetheart, here? That's definitely going to be in a show. Absolutely. We do do three live hours. So I'll definitely show you how to do that one. And um, on this one, I've extended the design. So as you know, it's for portrait design, but that one is, sorry, landscape design, but this one is portrait. So and I've extended the design. So I'll show, definitely show you how to do that one, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this down. I know I'm not matte and layering the card, but I'm just going to trim it down and show you how effective it looks when you start to trim it down and pop it into a card formation. I'm going to try and get three demos done today. Try. If not, we'll just pick up where we're left off tomorrow at three o'clock. So there we can see it already coming together. Now, you could st absolutely stop right there if you wanted to. If you wanted to. But I'm just going to show you how you could possibly enhance it a little bit more if you wanted to. So I'm just going to take my scissors here, just my scissors. If you've got the posh tools at home, brilliant, but I don't. So I'm just going to take the scissors and I'm just going to distress the edge of here. Now, this is not scary. <laughs> Please don't be off put by it. I'm just going to create a little bit of dimension and elevate it a little bit more. So I'm just taking the blade of my side of my scissors and I'm just going to go around and rough up those edges just a little bit, not too much. I don't want it to be like shabby chic but I do want it to have a point of difference. So I'm just roughing those edges up there. Be careful of um, paw prints, everybody, because if you get the black ink pad on it, you'll frustrate yourself. It'll be a nightmare. So can we see that there? So it looks like it's cotton paper then. Can we see that there? So it's just, albeit it's more distressed, it's actually softened, softened that harsh line around the edge. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of ink just to enhance it a little bit more. So this is where your fabulous brushes come into play, but you can use your daubers and all the lovely things, but gently you're going to pop a bit of colour around there, gently, because if you start to sort of like blend and blend, it's going to defeat the object of you doing your lovely app picture in the middle, isn't it? So gently does it. Can we see that there just on that side? A little bit firm. So the one that I'm using now is the smooth one with the arch handle. Can we see that there? Sorry, I don't know where to put it so you can see it. There we go. With the arch handle. That's the smooth. And this is one where if you struggle with holding things, you've got the arch on there to pop your hands underneath like so, like a hook. So, so here's where, again, you could absolutely leave it as is if you wanted to, or you could actually colour it with your pens, pencils, alcohol markers, watercolour markers, whatever you want. I'm going to hand this to Tom now, and Tom's going to colour it with his pencils, okay, to show you how amazing it is, for one, and two, how, um, by adding a bit of green and a bit of brown into the back, um, how cool it can look. And then we'll have a look at maybe popping it on a card. So that's just one simple technique by creating an aperture in a window to elevate your card. Now, you can see from, which card is it? Sorry, not this one. I don't know which one it is. That must have been the stairs. That if you just use the stamp as an entity on its own, black on white and matte and layer with a sentiment, it looks beautiful. But learning these little bits of techniques, you'll take a little bit out of maybe this demo, a little bit out of maybe this demo and maybe another demo, put them all together and you'll be creating your own masterpieces. And it's about taking the elements that you love. Not always am I going to create a card that you're going to love, but I know that whatever I do, there might be one thing out of that little demo that you think, oh, I actually quite like that. I don't like um, the square. I might, tr sorry, I don't like the rectangle. I might try a square. And you'll take the pieces you need and you'll make something stunning. So that's what it's all about. Okay, so that one's for you now, Tom, to colour with your pens, if you will, please. Pencils. Wh what colour? You can colour it whatever colour you want, sweetheart. Um, are we still in check? Is everybody still with us? I'm saying people saying we're out of sync a little bit, but I don't think that's a problem on our end, unfortunately. It does sometimes happen, does that one? So let me just grab some scrap paper, because this time we're going to create a different look. Similar technique, but different. So here we have a square piece of card. So once that's being coloured with pencils, you just matte and layer it on maybe some gold mirror board onto a black top folding note card. And what we'll do is when it's finished and coloured, we will pop it onto the back here so you can see. Fine here, everything's okay, okay. Adele's having a tough day at work. We are thinking about you. We are mindful that people do still need to work, so we are thinking about you. Yeah, out of sync. Hopefully it'll come good, guys, fingers crossed. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to show you a different technique. Same concept type style thing, but a little bit different. So I'm going to grab my um, brush, and it's got all the lovely pieces of card from what I've just um, shaved off that card there. Make sure it's clean. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a vintage card. So vintage colours. And what we're going to do, the inks that I'm going to use this time will go with, you need some brown tones. So walnut stain, wild honey, gathered twig, tea dye. Go with like, um, yeah, autonomous colours basically. And what we're going to do is instead of a smooth blend, we're going to try a random blend. And this is where you get your different results. So... First of all, let's lay some colour in areas. Now, the card that I'm using is normal cardstock, and it is fifteen by fifteen. Just normal white cardstock there. Yeah, it might be the signal, guys. I hope um, it's coming good at some point. 
So what I'm going to do first, the colours that I'm using are wild honey. So let's get some wild honey. So I'm just popping my blending brush into there. I'm just going to pop some random colours on there. Just in areas. Are you colouring the background in, Tom, instead of the actual tree? Yeah. Why don't you just colour the tree, sweetheart, instead of the background? Colour that tree in the swing. No, I'm actually colouring the background instead. Okay. Better get my sharpener out, hadn't I? <laughs> I'm not really looking So there we have the wild honey. Let's swap it out for gathered twig. Get a gathered twig on there too. A bit random. Turn your artwork around. I'm just doing like blobs, circle, circular blobs here, nothing like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be uniform really, just getting some colour down there. So that's that one. And then I'm going to use walnut stain. So this has got a, like a green undertone as this one, different, it doesn't actually look different on the packaging but it, it does have a green undertone. So. so again just random areas, I'm just going to get the whole of this piece of white cardstock covered in some different variations of uh, browns and orange yellows. And the next one I'm using is tea dye. So I'm just filling in those white spaces. And this is a great thing about these brushes. You're not governed by your handle. You're not going to get cramp because you can hold them in the way that's going to suit you and your wrist. So that's great. It's going to hurt your wrist colouring in that way, Tom. That's it. Well done. So, um, Tom's decided to colour the background rather than the foreground on the stamp, which is fine. It's just going to take longer than anticipated, so you may not see it in studio, you may see it next week. And now he's just sitting because he's colouring the whole background. Okay. Oh, he says he'll definitely be finishing it today for everyone. Okay. So I'm just going back to the wild honey and I'm just going to strengthen that colour in places because this seems to be the brighter of the ink pads. I think that's fine. So give it all a good swiss around, have a play. There we go. So reinking my ink pads, I just do like a zigzag and do you want me to actually show you? So I just grab my ink pad. I should show you quickly on here. I'm using the smooth brush with the handle. I know, sorry if I'm repeating myself. So this is my ink pad. What I do, what I do is I just do like a zigzag like that all the way down. Then I stop squeezing the bottle and then I just push the ink in with the nib and I just leave it for five minutes. That's how I do it, but you could just probably spot it and then push it in with the nib and then just leave it for five minutes. It should be fine. Hope that helps. Right, okay, so let's turn this artwork over so you can see exactly where we've gone with this piece of cardstock. So what we're gonna do here is we're sort of gonna create a little bit of a 
distressed background and we did do this on the um, I think it was on the tree set actually so you're going to need a piece of tissue and all we're going to do is we're going to activate a little bit of the background just to give it some texture so you can either spritz some water into your hand like so on the end of your hand and then just blot, blot it on flick it on with your hand or if you're not entirely comfortable doing that you can do it off the edge of a brush and what I would say thank you darling what I would say is give it a second or two to activate that ink you can see it's actually doing something now so I'm just going to give it a second or two to activate the colour underneath and then I'm going to use the tissue to absorb the ink out and it's going to leave this like a texturised pattern on the background so Tim, Tom's saying that he's finished his picture so I think we've got a bit of a waterfall going on there with the blue down the side maybe do you see a waterfall at the back of that swing? I was putting the waterfall and then that was a shine of the sun well, so the red. No, is that was the side of the sun. So yes, yeah, so the red is the, s the shine from the sun, and the no, blue side. Side of the sun, and the blue is the waterfall. Yes. Brilliant. Well done. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to take the tissue, add it to my artwork, and let it absorb all that ink that we've just pushed onto there. It's going to look like textured, hey? Yeah, I remember some people like make a. And then you get this sort of effect. Now you can absolutely, can we see that there? So you can absolutely do more. I do want a bit more on there. I do want it a little bit more texturized. Now you can do this with your sparkly inks. It'll leave sparkle. You can do it with all the stuff that you have in your stash. So I'm just going to add a bit more. I did the bigger drops this time, really big drops. And I'm just give it a second to drink that ink. The longer you leave it, the more diluted and bleached it will appear, okay? So, um, just have the patience just to leave it for a couple of seconds at least. So, let's get our tissue on there. There we go, that's a little bit better. Can we see that there? So, you can see it's bleached out. And we'll dry it with our gun and it will bleach it out even more when you heat set it. And the, the, when it dries out, it goes obviously even whiter. Um, okay, I won't go on then. So you can see now when you hold it up, the. the um, Leaching becomes more intense. Can we see that there? There we go. Look at that. So, you know, what was an ugly background now is a little bit more attractive with the detail on the back there. So, let's go on and make this into something pretty rather than a grungy background. So, I'm just going to grab my Eureka and this time we're going to heat emboss. I'm okay at the moment, darling. Would you like to draw a dandelion? Because you're good at them. Yeah. Draw a dandelion. Do you want to grab some new paper there? That one's still got a drawing on it. Maybe on the other side. Yeah. So if you are going to heat and bottom image, you do, snoo you do need to be mindful of the fact that if there is any moisture in your card, the embossing powder will stick to it all everywhere. So I'm just going to stand up, sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen, and grab my embossing anti-static bag, we really do need that. Here we go, so I'm just going to anti-static the whole area and this will hopefully help and stop the powder from sticking everywhere but where I want it to go. Hopefully, she says, let's hope so. Hey, let's just push that into shot for you there. Let's just move that out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat emboss in white and then this is where your artwork's really going to pop and it's going to push that grungy background into the background and then your stamp is going to become the foreground. So let's line our stamp up. And then 
let me just make sure my card is the right way. Are we going this way? Let's go this way. And then just pop the stamp on there. Leslie, Tom is saying she's just received her pencil and she loves your demo with the pencils. So she's going to have a play with her pencil. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. So I'm just using the sticky ink pad here all over the ink pad. I'm going to heat set this one in white and this is where your artwork's going to really look gorgeous. I am going to stamp it out twice because I'm not confident how I've got all the detail in there. down get all that lovely detail in there I'm not sure what size this piece of card is without measuring it I'll just do this part first and then I'll check the size for you so I'll just grab a piece of scrap paper so let's hope the powder doesn't stick everywhere but so Can we see there? It's picking up that lovely detail. Yes, darling. So we can see now how pretty that is. So what we started out with some browns and some not particularly great colours are uh, now looking beautiful because of the white detail on there see that there and then you'll get all that beautiful detail as soon as we come to heat set it so I'm using the white but you could use equally the gold the silver so let's get our gun hot Get our gun as hot as possible and then we get less lumps and bumps in our card, the less time it's spent on the card. So as soon as it's hot enough, I will heat set and it'll go super bright white. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Just one second. I'll help. Just one second. And just take that off. Just lean forward, sweetheart. There you go. Go on, it's okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gents. So I'll just finish doing this now. And as you can see, as you heat set it, the white gets brighter. The key to this though, um, guys, is the antistatic bag. Make sure you give it such a good covering of that antistatic bag and then you won't get all that white embossing powder sticking everywhere bar where you want it to go and you'll get a neater finish so there you have a beautiful bright white image on what looks like a quite a dreamy background you know with the, the splats on there so it was quite I won't say ugly because nothing's ugly we can always make it look pretty if we want to so let's let's elevate this card a little bit so this is where you can now pick up your watercolors and add some like blossom to the swing or the trees now you can paint with your distress inks or your watercolor palette I don't think there is really get what you've got in your stash you know I'll use this pretty pink and I'm using picked raspberry here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint some detail into the swing area and because we've used our lovely white embossing powder it'll act as a little bit of a resist. 
So I'm just going to pop some pink into these gaps in this swing. Just random. I'm not even following the stamp itself. I'm actually just going for it as if, you know, there is blossom creeping all the way up this tree. Pop some in the flower heads and then a few dots. So have the courage not to just follow the stamp itself. Go beyond the stamp if you, if you have the courage to do so. Because it just sort of like makes it look a little bit more arty. So we've got some green going on. Pick up some of the lovely green and drop some green into the leaves on there. So I'm going to randomly pop a little bit of green into the leaves and things. So I don't know if you can see that there, but it will show when I hold it up. And then we'll use one of the browns to fill in the side of the, 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 the tree and the seat. That's right, Doreen, fairies would look amazing. I think, um, who's done the one with fairies and things? I just filled in that seat there. And then we'll fill in our tree at the side. Let me just make some space so you can all see what's going on. And then we'll fill in this tree and bring it together. Use a little bit of the green too, just to darken it because it's on my mat. Fill in all those little areas. And then you can just brush any of the colour off the white embossing because obviously it acts as a resist. Pick up some green, spot some into the grass here. Like so. So just to elevate this a little bit more, I would add some either some splashes. So I pick up, dilute some of the ink that is on the front of my Eureka here, the pink particularly, and I would add some splashes. And then some of the green. And that obviously fuses into the background, makes it even more dreamified. And then I am going to use my metallic colour from Claire. This is the one that I'm using if you have got them, Sunshine. And I always like to do some metallic splats on the back. So I'm just going to um, hydrate this a little bit, get it going. I'm using the world's smallest brush. And I'm going to add some lovely metallic ones on there. So let's dry this one off. So when you think about it, we've just ink blended the background. We've, we've, we've taken a little bit of the ink out by adding some water. And then we've heat embossed the image in white. The rest is entirely up to you. Okay, it's not hard and if you do have fairy stamps and things like that you could maybe pop one on the swing or in the background of birds if you have any birds you see that lovely metallic in there so it just gives a little bit of a difference if you haven't got these metallics you know um, Tim Holtz Perfect Pills, you could dilute some of that down, splat some of that across your um, brush if you wanted to. We have our acrylic sprays, my twinkle one is fabulous for it too. Um, what else? I think if you've got any mica in your stash really, you would probably be able to create something quite sparkly. Um, let's just tidy my Eureka off here. And then let's get a sentiment for this card and it's not until you actually come to mat and layer things onto cards and it's not always that I mat and layer every card but when I'm trying to show you how to finish a card and how different it looks as soon as you mat and layer it onto something then that then I will do it live on air so I have a piece of white card here and I'm going to use the sentiment which is in the swing set this set is called smile and I'm using the smile stamp so just big enough for that sentiment there. I'm not going to measure it because I know you guys at home can just cut it to your size. I'm going to ink this one up in black. Like so. Take this out of here. I have a piece of black which I'm going to mat and layer it onto. But so it's in keeping with the theme and it matches my card. Just going to dry this off. 
so for the tree when I painted it I used a mix of whatever was on my lid so I used a green and a brown just mixed it up just to get a little bit of dimension on there we did have the storage tins on the website are they still there or have they gone out of stock I will check for you and you can use your splatter brush yep you can use use what you've got in your stash I have I have limited supplies at the moment I'm still living out of a box from my old studio and old premises but watch this space when I um, start to unload everything because it'll all be coming out all of the old stuff particularly my generation inks and things so let's grab a piece my piece of trusted scrap paper here and to keep it in theme what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of the browns and I'm just going to ink blend onto here very lightly turn it around a little bit so it's not white so it just pushed it back a little bit there can we see that there nothing fancy so just use one of the colors which you've used in with your card and it will stay in keeping with the theme I'm just going to take this one onto the black piece of background here like so and then let's get this mounted so I have a mat some matting layers already cut here so you can see instantly as soon as you pop that black on there it's like pop yet yeah, that it looks great as soon as you pop matte and layer it it looks fabulous so that's why I always say have the time and patience to follow the card through And what I'm going to do, just to elevate it a little bit more, is I'm going to matte and layer it onto some white for you. And then we can mount it onto a card at some point. And I will do it for the picture. Can you see how pretty that looks? So, you know, staying away from the pretty pinks, you don't have to do pretty pinks all the time. And again, it is nice to try. This would make a great gents card, wouldn't it? I'll just pop a pad on there. And another one there. And I'm just going to take it just under that tree line there. I'm going to take it right to the edge. Oh, not, not a fan of the symmetrical like so there and then that would be mounted onto a beautiful card and you are literally good to go I hope you like that something a little bit different yeah it is pretty when, but when it started out it was quite grungy wasn't it so it's personal preference I'll just hold it up to the front so you can see there You can see those lovely splats in the background there, just to elevate it a little bit more. You could pop some sparkly gems in and around the swing if you want to. I'm not going to throw everything at this design today because if you look behind me here, we have um, the swing cut out with sparkles around. So we will do this one. I need to do this, obviously the DL one, and then I want to extend the design not only taller, but I want to extend it widthways as well so you get a bigger um, landscape effect. So something a little bit different, or maybe it's something that you do all the time, whatever it does, it's always good to revisit these sort of techniques, isn't it, and try new things. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. I will be back with you tomorrow at three o'clock with the same stamp. So if you haven't got your stamp today, hopefully you'll get it in the morning so you can craft along. But as always, the videos are on YouTube and they don't go away, so you can catch up on them in your own time if you want to. So Tom is now um, sat with his dad on his earphones listening to a story. So I clearly was um, very boring today, as he would say to me. No, he wouldn't. So thank you for tuning in. Have a lovely afternoon, whatever you're doing. And don't forget to post your makes over on our Eureka fan page. And I will see you all tomorrow at 3pm. Take care, everyone. Bye.